Hi, Mike Kennedy. Spoiler, spoiler, alone. Season 11, Episode 10. I was surprised. A lot of the loans only had 10 site episodes, but obviously this one's going longer. So, who's left? First, we have William Lark M. Jr. He's from Happy Valley Goose Bay, Labrador, Canada. He's the one that's really used to the cold and different things. He's the one that did this outstanding thing with a with a long pole with snare on the end of it. You would just go up to a bird really slowly and put it in front of the bird. And kind of by the time that's happening, the bird's got the idea now that it can be, you're seeing it, it's not camouflaged, and it takes off. And if you put the snare right, he goes right into the snare and he's caught. So he's done that with several birds, which are kind of amazing. Then we get Timber Cleghorn is from Salem, Indiana, USA. That person, other person, Labrador, of course, is in Canada. Then we have Dove Pats, Pats, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's from Michigan in the USA, of course. Okay, now <coughs> things are getting darker <coughs> in more ways than one, uh, but they don't say exactly how many uh, hours of daylight there are. <coughs> but based on what one person said, it seemed like the sun was ra rising between uh, 10 and 11, and it was setting at 4 p.m. So that means you basically got maybe five hours, <coughs> excuse me, or so of daylight. And that's not a lot. And so that causes two big problems. Number one, it's dark. You can't do a lot of things uh, as skillfully. You know, you can't, it's going to be hard to shoot something with a bow and arrow when you can't see it. Uh, you know, still, they have headlamps. And I've always still had the question of, they must get batteries replenished all the time for them. Because in no way, any type of headlamp could be lasting. For, you know, they're in like day 50 something. So they're getting regular batteries. But, you know, they could ice fish in the dark if they were careful. But there's also a psychological effect. In other words, you get a lot of time where uh, you're not, you, can't, you can't just sleep like all of a sudden 16 hours a day. And so you get the sleep time and you get all this other time. So, you know, it's cold, you're in their shelter, blah, blah, blah. It's nothing to do. And so some of them make something. So this timber makes a, uh, he calls it a bass uh, uh, violin kind of from, uh, or uh, bass guitar, I mean, from uh, a moose antler that he found. And then uh, the other guy, uh, Dub, he makes a, uh, he makes a violin, which he actually plays for a second. So that's kind of interesting. Something to keep their mind engaged uh, you know, for the indigenous people up there, there would be a lot of work to do to stay, uh, to stay alive, basically, to survive. So those hours in the darkness inside the, you know, igloo or whatever they have for a, for a shelter, they've got a lot of work still to do. It isn't the case of, oh, what are we going to do for the next five hours? They've got, you know, and, and you know, some of the women have been working, they're working nonstop on on uh, uh, making clothes out of animal skins and all these different things, but a lot, a lot to do. But of course we take us, throw us into that situation. And, you know, we have these modern conveniences, you know, like steel knives and all these different things, bows and arrows. So we're not on that, that much of a pressure, but we still have that time. and. You know, to me, uh, I don't know if I'd use that time trying to make things that would have, would better affect my survival. I, w I would hope so. You know, you get your you get a knife, you can carve things, maybe you make fish trap, bird traps. I don't know, deadfalls, whatever. So that's a problem, and it, it you know it kind of messes with your mind too because you're in this long period of darkness. So what's going to happen here? What is happening? Spoiler, spoiler again. Okay, 
we have the three contestants, William, Timber, and Dub. They're, you know, and they're all facing, you know, real challenges. Uh, now, William uh, is ice fishing and catches a, a really large pike. And Timber, at the beginning of the show, is really worried about the food situation because his moose feet is starting to mold. So he's got to cut off those pieces. Maybe he's going to have to dry them over again or whatever. And But he's planning on, he has enough food, he says, to go to day 100. And I seriously think, I don't think it's going to get that far. I could be wrong. But even he's worried about food because of the mold, but also knowing that, uh, well, he goes in one area uh, where he's got about a snare set up. And just, you know, they've got snow now. There's no, there's no track. So he pulls all of his snares, and I assume he's going to set them in different places, maybe even closer to the shelter, try to get something. Oh, and there's a wolverine that's trying to get into his food cache. The big, you know, uh, wooden one he's built. And uh, one of the other contestants is ice fishing. And uh, he makes an ice cache. So what it is is a bunch of blocks of ice, you know, and there's a center area. You put your food in there and you pile other big ice blocks on it. So the idea is that's relatively safe because I guess, you know, we're now missing bear they're hopefully hibernated now and uh what other animals you know there are plenty of other animals who'd want that there was a there was like a weaselly type creature that was trying to get into it uh that he was filming but it just gave up and you know what about wolverines and things like that well how many how many animals are going to go out on the ice to find things you know heavy animals i would think are going to avoid that completely. So to me, it didn't look that secure, but maybe the fact that it's, you know, on a lake makes it much more secure. Uh, but it was interesting. You know, he had a cache on land and mice had gotten into it and eaten things and pooped all over things. So he basically had to throw that food out. And I guess I don't understand still. I think maybe I'd be this would be do me for strategy, but I would eat more for food and store less because I would be say I would think that I'm, I would rather store the food energy and weight in my body than food, food energy somewhere where something else can get at. So I can't imagine you actually like gain weight on alone, but I mean, with a moose that could be potential if you ate a lot of it, every, you know, when you first got it. Uh, but I guess it could happen. But even Timber, just looking at his face, you can tell uh, that he hasn't lost a lot of weight. I think they said he lost 30 pounds over 50 days. Some contestants have lost more than 50 pounds in 50 days. So he's a good 20 pounds ahead of any of the uh, contestants, I believe. And Particularly this guy, Dub, his face looks really bad. It looks all sunken in. It looks like he's really uh, pathetically thin. And But, you know, they don't show us all the metal, medical checks they've been doing. But, you know, they come, they weigh them. They don't show them how much weight they've lost. They, you know, the scales even, I watched kind of a behind-the-scenes thing. But they actually have some cardboard taped over the, the thing so, you know, the person, you know, standing in front of him can see the weight, but he can't see it. But, you know, they're doing the health checks, and a lot of it is body mass index. At a certain point, they pull people because they believe that's the point where in, you're in danger of uh, uh, hurting internal organs. So they want you out of there before that. Uh, but... Uh, so, you know, it's, it appears right now that this, the, the water, the river, ice fishing, is going to produce the most food for people over this time period. And the, the fish are really huge. They're catching, I mean, you know, uh, they're ca catching 15-pound fish. They're catching some that are like over, you know, over three feet long. I mean, they're, they're significant fish. And... um the the I don't 
I don't see that right at this point in this show, they didn't highlight many people having success with trapping. So I think it's more of a situation where now, once you have the snow cover, you're going to have, you're going to be soon be able to determine, uh, you know, where the animals are going and that will give you a benefit of setting up your snares actually in an area where the animals are traveling before there was a certain amount of guesswork, unless there were actually physical signs. And, you know, we're talking about small animals, so rabbits and things like that. And they don't, you know, when, when there's no snow, they don't leave a lot of evidence that they've gone by a certain way. So I think the snow in that way is going to help quite a bit. And of course, with the ice, it helped quite a bit because uh, the period before the river freezes, the animal, the fish are more like seeking warmer water. So they go down into deeper water and things. And it's only when they get iced over again that the fish are, you know, are swimming a lot more uh, uh, nearer the surface. And of course, uh, you're, you're dropping a piece of food down into a frozen river where obviously these huge fish are hungry. <laughs> See that food, they're going to take it. Uh, one of the episodes, uh, Timur did catch a fish with, uh, oh gee, I'm gonna, I can't remember what it's called. But basically, uh, you take something, you know, sometimes they do it with thorns. Or you could do it grind down with bone or something. But basically what you make is something about this big and you sharpen both ends of it. Then you tie a knot, you know, in the center of it. And then you put the bait on it. And the idea is the fish swallows it the long way, but eventually it turns inside the fish at one point and then it's stuck there. And the fish can't like uh, cough it up or anything because it's physically stuck there. Then you can pull a fish up. So, uh, you know, that's a method that's been used for, you know, thousands of years, I would assume, because they find those in in places. Um, so that's where we're going now. Timber has an episode where he gets his fire a little too high in his shelter. And uh, that could be dangerous because if he were to burn down his shelter now with the situation going on now, uh, that would be a significant problem. That could be an event where he would tap out. I mean, I could suppose he could repurpose some of the, the cut lumber in his cash or something, or I don't know what would happen, but whatever, it would be a significant problem. Uh, but he still seems to have one of the better shelters. and uh, But they all obviously are doing it. And so much can happen. I'm still, I'm still betting on timber. Because he's, you know, he's been eating the best so far. He's lost the le least amount of weight. And uh, he's he's able to combat some of the, the mood swings that you go through in a situation like this. Early in the season, he went out and there was a moose. And he was so excited and he shot at it. And he didn't get it and the moose just ran away. And so... It seemed like for 24 hours afterwards, you're saying, oh, my God, I'll never get a chance like that again. That was a once in a, you know, and he's thinking all these negative thoughts, but he decides he's going to try anyway. And sure enough, he goes back out in that area one day. There's a moose. He takes it down with one arrow that it drops the animal. And it's like that. That's kind of amazing because they're not using the high power bows that you normally would use for hunting, the compound bows, they can't have those. And so uh, taking this moose down, you know, killing it with one arrow was, I think was pretty amazing. But see, if he, he just he kept holding on to that disappointment, he never would have gone back out there and, and caught it because you could look at this thing the opposite way saying, wait a second, I saw a moose there. I may see one again there. And that would be positive, not, oh my goodness, I lost my big chance. But, you know, different things hit you, and in some way you've got to keep positive. <laughs> now, I don't know about the other people, but Timber's made it pretty clear 
that he came from a, a Christian situation, even though uh, there were some abusive elements in his, you know, in his family. He hasn't gone into them a lot, but uh, but the one thing that came out positive from this is his, his uh, religious beliefs. And near the end of one show, oh, so he's he's worried about this food get moldy. There's not a fat and moose meat. What is he gonna do? He goes out, you know, and he pulls in this decent side fish. So I'll end with this: is what uh, he and he does, and they. They've done some really amazing editing this time. There's one scene where Timber's playing this instrument he made and singing the song, and they they dub it all up, and they have two of them on one screen. They they put his voice over his voice again, so it sounds like a number of people's singing. But that was that was pretty good editing there. That was that was amusing. That was interesting. But uh, uh oh my goodness, and the thing. The thing I wrote down is the wrong verse because it was Psalm 27. I'm sure that he read, but I, I could be wrong. This says Isaiah 41, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Maybe that's very similar to... I was sure I heard him say Psalm 27, but maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, he's got this, this system of beliefs that is going to help him, uh, you know, keep in a positive attitude. And the other guys are doing pretty good with that. Although, like I say, the, uh, the, uh, the dub person has, has lost so much weight. I could see him tapping out. And before he got the fish, uh, he was pretty, it was pretty certain he was going to, he was going to tap out. And it's funny because when he, when he catches the fish, he's like doing a happy dance and everything. He's yelling and screaming. He's so happy. But it's interesting. And as a younger man, I did some periods of fasting, you know, for fast and prayer type things. And I did some long ones that were like, I don't know if I went beyond two weeks or not. But there's one point where your body switches over. Like, it's like you're a young person. What do you think about? Think about work, money, women girls, all of these different things. Well, at one point, all of that is flushed down the toilet and all you're thinking about is food. That's the one thing that's always in your mind. That get, you know, you're thinking about food, you're thinking about it, you're wishing you had this, wishing you had that. But I assume that's part of your body's way of protecting you, telling you, no, don't, if you're going to worry about something, you better be worried about food because if you don't get some food soon, you're going to be in a world of hurt. But they, they've said uh, a healthy adult can you can last three weeks without food if they they have enough water, and uh, that's the point before the body kind of turns on itself and starts, uh, you know, eating muscles and different things like that. Now, I don't, they've never looked at that and said, well, no, if you've got 30 pounds more on your weight, you could last four weeks or whatever. But uh, thank goodness none of these people have had to go three weeks without any food uh, because that they never could have built the shelters and things they, they are with, you know, with so little food. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I assume next time we'll have two people tap out or two people... Uh, pulled out. Like I say, I can imagine that Dub will get pulled by the medical team just because he, at least his face, he looks very, very sunken and uh, not well at all. And I don't know about the man from Labrador, but, uh, you know, the emotions are playing a part here too. So you tend to think uh, the situation is worse than it is or you have this false idea of, uh, like Timber saying he's got the food for later. Uh, one of the contestants went out with a lot of stored dry fish, but he had been he had been catching fish and restricted himself to a small amount of fish, and so eventually, when the medical team came, he was below that uh, body mass index. His teeth were even loose 
I guess that's one thing that can happen once you've, you know, not eaten for a really long period. And uh, they just had to pull him. So uh, his his mind was not thinking right. And that's what, you know, dehydration, not drinking enough water, which is a problem because you got to get the water, you got to purify it, blah, 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 before you drink it. That can lead to confusion. But also just a lack of uh, food can lead to that confusion. And in this case, this guy, uh, he got pulled when he had food that could have prevented that. And, uh, but his idea of having food for later was outweighing his sense that he needed to eat food now. And like I said, I'm not really faulting him for that because I think you, your mind becomes hazy in those situations and you can just do the wrong thing. And, uh, like I say, I think, I don't know, part of me says if I was, of course I have to be way younger and not all the problems I have, but if I wasn't doing that in that situation, I think I would eat more of the food than the contestants are and not storing as much ahead. Now, you know, I guess it is true. Some of them have gone a while between catching a fish. So you could see the, the advantage of saying, oh, I'm going to have a week's worth of food stored because I know I'm going to catch another something within a week. But, and, uh, but that's only me. Tell me what you think below. Bye.